Hi, welcome to Old Guys Gentlemen Flex Fountain Pens. This will be episode number 66, and I'll be reviewing the Peniter Back to the Future pen that just came out, uh, including the unboxing. However, I thought I recorded the unboxing. It turns out I didn't, so this will be a reenactment of the unboxing. I've never gotten a pen box like this before for one pen. So that was kind of amazing in itself. And then I figured out why it was so large. I remembered that there's a like a commemoration book that comes with this. By the way, it also came with a warranty and this is number 196 out of 943, uh, kind of a certificate of authentic authenticity in which numbered pen it is. Really nice case, it's magnetic. That's pretty cool. This section pulls out that holds the pen. And then this is the book. And it's full of great pictures about the history of Penider. And I haven't looked at it yet, so I can't really comment too much about it except uh, it looks like the kind of book I really enjoy uh, reading. Oh, I like that picture. So there's that. You got this whole section that holds the pen. And let me go through and give you a uh, kind of a cursory overview before I get into the details. Okay, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect with the effect of this, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it at this point. It's like carboiridium. <laughs> I don't know if it's iridium and it's some sort of carbon matrix uh, material or what. But uh, in the interview that I saw with um, Goulet and the guy from uh, Penider, he talked about colors, and I think what he really meant was the ref it gives you localized, soft reflections of very fine, very fine um, striations. It's kind of cool. Very distinctive. I don't have any pen that has anything close to looking like this. Not sure about how I feel about about this top, but it is part of the design, and I think what they were going for uh, was something on the order of a quill, or maybe even further back in time, the beginning of pens. Um, I forget what they were called, but the the kind of pen that would write on papyrus. Very cool looking. The next cool thing, reason why I got it, is this magnetic thing is, I like that. Never going to be any galled threads with this thing. No pressure on caps for cracking. A lot of good things to say about this kind of mechanism. And the other cool thing is, look at that. It's like almost looks like a seamless pen with a cap on it. I mean, you can you can see the seam, but only if you're kind of looking for it. I like that. Uh, the filling mechanism. Uh, when I first, I have not filled this with ink yet. That'll come in the next section of this review. I found that this was a little bit hard to move. And it actually is again when I was sitting there, but um, but now it's not bad. It 
And I shouldn't say it was really hard to move. It was just took a little bit of, of effort. So anyhow, that's, I think it's a piston. This is basically pulling the piston up and down again. Uh, the other thing that really got me interested is I, if you, well, it's even in the, in the title of my, um, my channel. I love flex nibs. And this is a modern flex nib of sorts. Never had one before. I guess it gets most of its flex from uh, this thinner section here. And the proof will be in the writing, but I did do a check here. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on here and I get a nice little spread at the end. So that'll be neat to see what that's like. My major concern with this thing was um, this is unlike any fountain pen section I've ever seen. And I see this sharp edge here and I thought that's going to be trouble. This is not going to be a pen that's going to be comfortable to write with even though it's really cool looking. But when I write it with it, I usually write right around here and what happens is uh, you get the thumb and the finger, sorry I've been doing some varnishing, <laughs> uh, get the thumb and the finger fit nicely on this round edge and don't even feel that edge and the bottom finger rests on the round portion down here. So it's like your hand would never know that it's got that very different section area. So now for a little bit more detail. Normally I have written a lot of information here. I figured, well, maybe I'll just do that at the same time. And the first thing I want to do is, is fill this thing. I've heard this nib is pretty wet. So I'm going to use my driest ink to begin with. This uh, Pelican 4001 Blau Schwarz uh, Blue Black. I don't know if I mentioned it um, earlier, but I'm suffering from some bursitis in this thumb, so this hand doesn't work as well as it should, which kind of sucks because I'm right-handed. I'm not seeing any bubbles, so I'm assuming that I've filled it. Well, let's, let's go the other way and see what we see. Yep. So counterclockwise is fill. That's pretty cool. Well, why don't I do a little bit of dimensions? You can see me measure as we go through here. So the length of this cap is a little short of um, six inches. And posted, it is little short of 17 inches and unposted it is a little over 5 inches. Uh, this pen would work fine unposted but as I've said in other videos I, I like the feel of the extra weight on the back end. So let's do a little writing with it. Pen -iter. Yeah, I would have to say that this is really, um, really wet. Do my little test here. That lip says it's extra fine. But if I use um, Richard Binder's thing, now, fine is actually pretty thick by um, typical Western standards. 
right here. You know, I really like stuff that's down here around triple extra fine, so I may either send this out or try to grind it down myself to, to get a finer. Okay, and then in terms of how broad we can get, a little bit broader than that. And there, are railroads. So you get like triple broad, I guess. Boy, it's still really wet. Well, I am going to try a different ink on this. What? There's more? Yeah, as you could probably tell from my tone, I like this pen, but I didn't particularly like the um, line variation characteristics. And I went back, tried some other inks. Um, turns out that one of the better inks to work in this thing is this Pelican 4001 Blue Black. Maybe the other 4001s would work as well. But this is one of my driest inks. And then what I did is I got my my loop out and took a really close look at the nib, but there was there was a gap between these two tines here, and that might have been causing all the extra flow. It still writes a little bit on the wet side, but I ended up pulling this thing out. It, it just screws in. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a, like a, a standard uh, Bosque or uh, Joe Wolf size, but it's a nib unit that pulls out, gives you better access to, to the nib. And I basically kind of cross-tined it, as you can see from my fingers, uh, and squeezed for a few seconds and then crossed it the other way, squeezed for a few seconds. And I got rid of the gap now, I don't know, because I didn't look at it when I first got it, whether that gap was there to begin with, and that's why I was getting all the wet flow, or maybe because of uh, some of the flexing I was doing with it, I was bending it back. Anyhow, in this tighter tine situation that I've created here, uh, let's take a look and you'll see how um, I, I think I have a lot of the line variation back that I was looking for. Still only probably medium flex, but uh, I'm in the, I'm back in the happy range of, of writing. Let's do the, um, you can probably see that the line size is a lot thinner. This is getting close to double extra fine with a light hand. Putting additional pressure on it. Now I'm a little afraid to put too much pressure on it for fear I'll be back into spreading the tines, but that's not too bad of a of a line variation. So now let's much more line variation, less less flow. Now let's come back and we'll check the tines and see if we, I gotta pull the ink out to be able to see whether I've separated the tines or not. And I have not, so they're still tight. So you can get some decent line variation and it's not that wet if you use the right kind of ink. Um, if you like lots of flow and you don't care too much about the flex, then um, don't worry about it. <laughs> but if you like finer lines, like, like I tend to like, 
and you want to have a little bit more visible line variation, um, take a look at it through a loop. And if you're not comfortable with it, um, get a nib person to um, close the thing up for you. I mean, the other adjustment that could have been made, a lot of times I can control the flow on older pens by heat setting it, uh, sticking this in some hot water, or exposing it to um, like an air dryer, and then squeezing it, and it sets it into the shape of the nib so that it's not um, forcing any different configurations of this up here and creates a more even flow. But this is plastic. Uh, it's not like the older pens where it's ebonite. And um, that wouldn't work here. I've done that. I've done it with, with plastic before, but I tend to end up smushing these things over, so it's not, not recommended. But this is, this is good the way it is. So, so now I have a beautiful, very unique pen that writes with about medium flex. It's a winner. <laughs> so I'm a lot happier now. Thanks for watching.